Ravens take on the Bills this Sunday night in Baltimore. Blackout game. This is the game preview episode. We're diving into all the details of this matchup after some words from the greatest linebacker in the history of the game. Ravens flock. The flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock rundown nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly tune in motionless brain waves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed appreciate you ray what's up ravens fans my name is ryan and welcome back to another episode of the flock rundown game preview episode ravens bills this sunday night in baltimore i cannot wait for this one man this is a banger of a game let's dive into the injury reports for both teams we'll start with the buffalo bills they got terrell bernard linebacker he's ruled out and then for the baltimore ravens it's looking like cornerback jalen armor davis is going to be ruled out and left guard andrew Voorhees. so that brings up a conversation of who's going to replace Voorhees at left guard. Is it Ben Cleveland? Is it Josh Jones? Do they move McCarry over to left guard and start Roger Rosengarten at right tackle? I'm not sure how the Ravens are going to play this. They obviously will have a plan because Voorhees hasn't been practicing all week, so this is no surprise if they have to replace the left guard spot. But I really don't know. I don't mind any of these options because we haven't seen Cleveland or Josh Jones get any meaningful minutes at guard. And then the other option of moving McCarry over to left guard and starting Roger Rosengarten doesn't sound that bad either. I mean, Roger Rosengarten is going to be our starting right tackle. And we know McCarry has filled in at guard spots before and done well. So I, uh, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know how it's going to play out. I think that one of those options is going to be how they handle this Voorhees is out situation. But the O-line talk continues, you know. We're talking about the offensive line every single week, and now Voorhees is out after they just had a pretty good game against Dallas. I was kind of excited to see this same unit roll back out there and against Buffalo just to kind of see if the Dallas game was an outlier or is this line getting better week after week. But we're probably not going to see Voorhees. I really don't think it impacts the game massively. It's not like Voorhees has been some rock solid left guard that never makes mistakes. It's not like he's Ronnie or Tyler Linderbaum, you know, like Voorhees is replaceable right now. I know he's got a lot of upside. I, I do like his upside. I think that Voorhees will be our left guard long term. But the way he's playing right now in these first few games, I, I honestly feel like we probably could bring in a Ben Cleveland or move McCarry over or Josh Jones and be the same caliber of play, you know, if not maybe even a little better, who knows. But I don't think there's going to be a massive drop off at left guard. As long as the Ravens O-line can play like they did against Dallas last week against this front, and I know that's a bigger challenge. I think the Ravens are going to be able to move the ball in this defense. The Bills are playing really well on defense, but I think that the Ravens can cause a lot of issues for them. We have a lot of things going on on offense for that defense to think about. They haven't played anybody like Baltimore. Strong run game with Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson. I mean, there's just so much to think about. The Bills are going to have to keep their eye on Lamar pulling it. They're going to have to make sure they have a strong plan to shut down the run game with Derrick Henry. And then if the Bills bring in a heavier personnel to try and shut down Derrick Henry in the run game and put pressure on Lamar, we're going to have mismatches with our tight ends and with guys outside. You know, Zay Flowers is always a mismatch on the outside. I think he can beat any corner that the Bills have. And then Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely on the inside matched up against linebackers are going to be able to eat. So I think the Ravens should keep it simple, stick to running the ball. That is their identity. You know, we've been talking about identity throughout these last few weeks. It's running the ball, whether that's Lamar, whether that's Derrick Henry, we need to establish a strong run game. And I can see both Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely being more involved in this game. I think that the Ravens need to create some easier throws and those guys matched up against linebackers is an advantage for us. So I think we need to take advantage of that. We need to then push the ball down the field occasionally to Zay and Rashad and Nelson Aguilar. And then we need to make sure we're committed and establishing a run game. Obviously, this is all dependent on good offensive line play or at least solid offensive line play. If our offensive line is playing awful or having a lot of the lapses that they were having in week one and week two, then that changes because the Bills front is stacked, man. You know, Ed Oliver, Russo, Von Miller, they, they have a really talented front 
and can cause a lot of problems for the Ravens offensive line. They can disrupt the run game a bit. And more importantly, I think that they can get to Lamar in passing situations if we need to consistently pass. If the Ravens get behind in this game and the Bills are able to tee off, I can see Falele flopping on a few and uh, Lamar being sacked three to five times in this game. And I think that's why it's so important to establish the run game because then you kind of control the game. You don't want to get behind in this game. The Bills are another front-running team. You know, we just played Dallas last week. We got out to a quick 14-0 lead against Dallas, but if it was reversed, if Dallas was out to a 14-0 lead on us, you would have saw Dallas's pass rush eat a lot more. So it really just depends how this game goes. If the Ravens can establish a consistent, strong running game and kind of take the easier throws and march down the field, which I know they're capable of. I mean, we saw it many times. And by establishing the run early, I definitely don't mean 45 runs to 15 passes. If, if that's how it goes, then we're dominating the game most likely. But I think it'll be a lot more even, you know, 35 runs, 25 passes. We're definitely going to pass a lot more. Lamar's going to have to push the ball downfield a little bit. But I really think as long as our O-line plays solid, the Ravens do have an advantage and are able to score points on this Bills defense. Flipping to the other side of the ball, the Ravens defense has their hands full. I mean, the Bills offense is the hottest offense in football. I think the Bills collectively as a team are playing the best football right now in the league. But I really like how we match up against the Bills. Our corners are able to play really physical ball. Our whole defense can play really physical ball. And I think that's what you have to do against the Bills to disrupt this pass game. They like throwing the ball quick to the backs, to Shakir in the slot, to the tight ends. They really like getting the ball out of their hands quick. The pass rush then gets neutralized and Josh Allen gets in a rhythm and they kind of just keep marching down the field over and over again with these quick passes. You need to disrupt that timing. You got to be all in these receivers face. There's not an elite wide receiver out there. I know Shakir is probably their number one. He's going to most likely play a lot in the slot. I wouldn't be against moving Marlon Humphrey into the slot at least a lot of the time to cover Shakir because I think Marlon's probably playing the best out of our corners right now and can get really physical with Shakir and disrupt that timing. And then we can have Nate Wiggins and Brandon Stevens on the outside to take care of their other wide receivers. I don't think that there's game-breaking talent in their passing game. They're just really good at getting guys open, getting the ball to them quick. They're great at run after the catch. And I just really feel like if we're in their face, we disrupt that first read, that quick timing, especially with the backs too. They send motions a lot and then just throw a quick to James Cook. If we can have linebackers, Trenton Simpson or even Kyle Hamilton come up and disrupt a lot of those quick plays and be on that, that's going to cause their offense some problems because now their first read's gone. Now Josh Allen's got to go through the rest of his progressions. And at that point, we have a really strong pass rush that I think we could start to get some pressure on them. But Josh Allen has not been pressured a lot because they're getting rid of the ball super fast, man. And that erases your pass rush. Your pass rush is irrelevant when it's hike throw. Now, obviously, Allen's going to make some plays, some plays are going to break down. He's going to take off. He's going to break a couple tackles or break a sack or two. I know that's going to happen. I mean, Allen's a beast, man. He's definitely going to make plays, but we need to make sure that our defense is playing physical enough to disrupt their timing as much as possible. And then obviously we need to shut down the Bills running game. I think that that's a given week in and week out. You need to try and make every team as one dimensional as possible. So we need to shut down their traditional running game. And I feel like we will. I don't think that the Bills are a massive threat in that regard, but they get their backs involved in many other ways. They're going to be throwing to these backs as well. So while you need to make sure that you're shutting the run game down, you need to make sure that you got an athletic guy that is going to be able to stick on these backs. So a Kyle Hamilton, a Trenton Simpson, you know, whatever the play call is in that situation, we just need to make sure that we're not leaving these backs with a lot of space because that's another easy throw. That's an easy way for Josh Allen to get in a rhythm. And once they're in a rhythm and they're rolling and he's spreading the ball all over the field to everybody, the defense starts to get clueless. You know, you got to take away what they want to do. So I think that that's the best way is just to be in their face, disrupt their quick timing, take away that initial quick read that they want to go to. And that's where I think the Bills can make a few more mistakes and hopefully Allen starts throwing some interceptions again. I know in the past he's uh, been willing to, to try and fit it into tight windows. This year he's been a lot more patient, but I think Baltimore's defense is going to force him to make some really tight throws. Not that he's not able to, but that obviously opens him up to more interceptions, tip balls, just a lot of things like that. I think our corners can really 
stick on these wide receivers and get physical. And then a major factor in this game for the Ravens is playing the whole game, playing all four quarters, playing 60 minutes of ball. It sounds so easy to say that. Obviously, every team should be playing all four quarters, but the Ravens have had some awful fourth quarters, not only this year, but last year as well. So there's something to that. It's carrying over. So this is a great test at home, prime time. The world's watching. It's a blackout game. The crowd's going to be crazy. This is a great time to finish the game, to play all four quarters, to have our fourth quarter be our best quarter. Let's do that. I don't think this is the game to be conservative at all in any regard, defensively or offensively. Keep the pedal down. Keep pushing. Keep putting pressure on them. Let's make this as tough as possible for the Bills because this is the best team we've played, man. I think that this team right now is playing better than the Chiefs we played in week one. Now, obviously, we're playing better than we were in week one as well. But the Bills are playing great ball, so the Ravens got to show up, man. And I think they will. I mean, prime time at home, blackout game. We've never been blown out. I, I mean, unless I'm missing a game that I've forgotten in my mind, we don't get blown out. We, we barely ever get blown out anyway, but especially a primetime game at home with the world watching, the Ravens are out to prove something, man. They don't want to go one and three. The Bills are undefeated. You know, three and one to the Bills is not really that big of a deal in my opinion, but one and three for the Ravens is an uphill battle. So let's get back to 500. Let's go two and two. I think the crowd's going to be an X factor in this game, man. Those blackout primetime games, the energy's different. The way that m and lights up, the way they turn the lights out, I mean, it's it's crazy. They're, they're literally flipping the lights on and off with a, with a switch, a whole stadium full of lights. It, it's definitely an experience, man. So I, uh, I think that that matters. You know, I don't always say that a home crowd is going to be like the deciding factor in a game or anything. And I don't think that, that, that they're necessarily a deciding factor, but they're definitely an X factor in this game because the Ravens are going to be playing with a lot of energy. But let's end this with some score predictions. I'm going Ravens 31, Bills 27. I think this is a close game. All respect in the world to the Bills. They're going to be able to put up some points. Hopefully our defense isn't getting trash like it was the last few weeks in the fourth quarter. The rest of the game, we've played great. So if we can just play four quarters, I think uh, we'll be able to keep the Bills under 30. And then I think our offense is going to be able to get to 30. We had quick 28 points last week by the start of the third quarter, and then we fell flat. But this is not a game where we're going to fall flat, man. It's going to be a high-energy game. And I think this is a much more balanced game for the Ravens' offense. I could see Mark Andrews, Isaiah likely getting a lot more involved. Zay Flowers is going to have a ton of targets. Derrick Henry and Lamar are obviously going to be involved in the run game. But I think that this is more balanced. You're going to see a bit more downfield off of that strong run game. And then on the other side, our defense has just got to get physical with Buffalo, man. If you don't, if you sag off, if you let them get in a rhythm and Josh Allen can just get his first read and get the ball out of his hands fast, it's going to be a long night. But let me know what your score predictions are, what you're thinking about this game, how you're feeling about this game, how you're feeling about us having a new left guard, who do you think it's going to be? Drop all that in the comments, man. I always love reading through what you guys have to say. But that's it for today. Appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in to another episode of the flock rundown go ravens man massive game this sunday night i can't wait have a beautiful rest of your day enjoy your weekend and i'll talk to you guys soon Finish em. motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed